Today we're going to be going over how to do a spiral wigwag. I'm going to use a bender back technique to put the kicks in here. So I've stretched down my tubing to about 12.7 and I'm going to add my first termination. So I'm coming right over to kind of where the knuckle starts. You could tear this off if you didn't want to carry the weight, but just left it there and I'll work with it. I usually like to do about two full rotations, anticipating that I'm going to cut it in half and put one of the rotations into the wigwag ball as the spiral termination. And you get a little bit of collapse when you do that much heat and spiral so I just add a little air even it back out make sure it's not collapsed down to a pinhole now I'm going to add the kicks in using the bender back technique so here I'm heating a section and then you slightly just bend the two rods back and add a little kick this actually adds two kicks, allowing you to fit a little bit more pattern in your section. I have about six inches pulled down here that I plan on adding kicks into. And a good rule of thumb is the more kicks, the merrier. And then I'm letting that set up really good as I'm before I'm moving on to my next kick. And then I'm coming about, you know, 15 degrees back, rotating the handles in perfect sequence as I add that little kick into the tubing. And then if you can repeat it, the amount of spins, the angle, each kick, you'll have the same size kicks progressing down your tubing. Using the L marver there just to straighten out the kicks, make sure all the bumps are in line. There you can see you got some bender back kicks. Add a couple more here just for good measure. Again, the more kicks, the better this is going to look. It does take some time to add these in. This is obviously sped up so we didn't have to sit through the whole thing. Using the roller just to get it, make sure everything is nice and straight. Then I'm going to turn my torch up and I'm going to add the last termination here. And again, I'm going to do about two rotations in the tubing anticipating cutting that in half and leaving one full rotation or one spiral in my termination. And this really wants to condense as you're, you know, spinning this up, so you're going to have to puff into it, even it out a little bit. Again, just checking to make sure everything ends up nice and straight. The more you can work on center, the better your end product is going to come out. And I'm really letting this set up before I go in to blow this out and make it all into one. Some people start in the center, you can start on the left, you can start on the right. Doesn't really matter, I've done it all. All seems to work. I usually like to start where my heat base was last, just so I know there's not going to be any cracking issues. So here I'm heating up about a third of the wigwag sections. And I'm just going to start to expand them ever so slightly. And here I'm going to add some heat to the middle third and do the same thing. And again, you don't want to take 
this whole thing and try to get it hot and blow it into one big ball. You want to take little steps, kind of work down it, puff it out, puff it out, enlarge it. So here I am, I'm going for the last little section, the last third. And I try to include the amount of the spiral termination that I want in the finished product here. Which is tricky. After you do about a thousand of them, of course, you'll, you'll figure out exactly where you need to be. But you can see I puffed up right into that spiral just a little bit. So now I'm going to take those thirds and I'm going to blow them together in half. So I'm going to expand about half of it and then expand the other half of it. And I'm going to get a little football shape here. And again, I'm trying to include just enough of that spiral termination. If you get too much, you're going to have a giant termination. If you don't get enough, you're going to have no no spiral in your termination. So here I'm just heating the whole thing to even it out a little bit more, round it out a little bit more in those little steps I was talking about. Make sure everything's nice and straight. Make sure your wall weight is nice and even. halfway stage, nice little football shape. Terminations are starting to come into the edges. Add a little more heat and round this thing out really good here. So here you can see I'm heating and puffing, even out the wall weight, going for that kind of finished football shape. See, it looks a lot like a football. I'm gonna throw it on the roller, check it out. Looks pretty good. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit more of that termination into the ball. There wasn't quite enough in there. So the next move here is to get the whole thing ripping hot and add the spiral. So we're gonna twist the whole wigwag up. 360 degrees into one spiral. Just one rotation around. You can see there the softer colors are kind of caving in, but that's one spin in the, the wigwag there. And a puff evens it all out, and it's back to that nice football shape we're looking for. So now I'm going to rip the handle off here and we're going to clean this up and get a nice clean termination here. Just pick, pick and rolling off some waste here. Not quite straight so I'm going to go in, heat the back of it and make sure this is nice and straight before I go any further. Just using a little piece of glass where there's going to be some waste in that termination to make sure it's on center. Now the key to the termination here is to pick out just a little bit of color. You don't want to leave too much or too little. Once again, after you do about a thousand of these, you'll know what you're looking for. And you can kind of pull that clear up over the color, but it's inevitable that there's going to be color exposed. So to melt it in, you gotta start way in the back of your flame. There's sensitive colors in this pull. We don't wanna burn them up. If you boil them right here, you're gonna see it in your end product. So now that I've gently heated that termination and worked it back towards me, I can go in full force on the ball. That termination should be fairly good for the rest of the process. Again, there is exposed color there and you don't wanna blast it too hard. 
So there you can see I got it really ripping hot to get the final round shape. So from that football to that final round, a lot of heat, kind of juggling the glass. But you can see there we have a nice round ball with a 360 degree spin in the wigwag, which will make for a really nice pattern in the finished product. So the next step is popping your hole. I like to do this with the Smith torch to start and then I'll expand that little heat base I put in there in the big flame and blow it out. And there it goes. And I like to leave this hole small to start. So now we're going to add a cold seal on center and we're going to do the other termination. design down to match the other side and it's really important you'll see in here pretty soon I look at the other termination I see how much is there and then I attempt to match it on the other side so from there I kind of know how much I need and if I need to remove a little bit more I can to get the same effect on each end of the ball this is real important for nice clean symmetrical wigwags Pick a couple picks to get the clear over the color, back of the flame, work back towards you. And if you're burning out termination, oh, almost dropped it there. <laughs> and if you're burning out terminations, just, you know, when you're first melting them in, put them way in the back of the flame and ease them towards you. If you burn up that color, it's pretty much toast from there on out. There I used a Sofietta to kind of expand the one side of the ball. Here I'm showing another thing you can use. This is just a piece of 12-7, which actually works better in this case with a small hole. So now I've got a semi-round wigwag ball. I'm going to flip the axis on it here using another cold seal. some six mil. You always want to clean it up before you use it for a cold seal so you have a nice clean end of the rod to attach to your ball with. And there it is. A little off center. Knock the other one off. And then we're straightening the ball out. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to hit the center of the design with that six mil punny have the hole being the exact back of the design and if that punny's in the center and that hole is small you have a chance here to open it up and everything will stay on center so now I'm going to open up the hole on center with the jack starting with just one end because the hole is small and as I open up the hole I'm going to stick both the ends of the jacks in there and then again, the angle here is really important. You want to go up inside and kind of push that wall out. So here I am just doing little step-by-step -step expansions. That angle again is really important to be pushing from the wall inside out. I'm shooting for about a dime size hole. That seems to be my ideal size for encolmoing wigwag balls of this size. And I like to use the little bend, the spring bend on the back of the jacks as a rough reference to get it near that dime size. So there you can see, I have the finished wigwag ball ready to encalmo into the spoon. Thanks again for watching and check out the next video for the assembly.